Right, so I'm about to start on this Honda. You guys have already seen uh, the initial pickup video of this, but the first thing we're gonna do is change the oil in it. The oil is blacker than black. In fact, you can see some of it kind of splattered around the deck there. But let's, yeah, there you go. So there's hardly any oil in it to begin with. So before we screw with this thing anymore, I've already cleaned it off with the pressure washer. We're gonna drain the oil out of it. And I've got some mixed brand non-synthetic 5W30, which will be just fine for our purposes. And then these, the little thumb grips, I taped those back down after I hit them with some silicone. Oops. So I'm just gonna let it drain for a bit. Be right back. While the machine's on its side, let's go ahead and take a look at the deck. I already hit it with the pressure washer once. Got most of the grass clippings off. The V-belt's in good shape. I don't really see any reason to change that. Probably good to flip her back over now. I know I've said this before, I don't know how many times on my videos, but it just amazes me how somebody can spend four or five, six hundred dollars on a lawnmower and just proceed to neglect it for whatever reason, never change the oil. Never really spray it off after you're done. It just amazes me, but I guess uh, some people just genuinely don't care about how their money gets spent. Now, Honda does call for a 5W30 full synthetic or a 10W30 conventional, which complies with the uh, APIS-J. This was an SN in this bottle. Um, this either has Castrol GTX or it's got uh, the, the super super tech stuff in it so i'm not really too worried about it uh, especially in my climate really it's uh i check the oil before every time i use my machines anyways and i'm probably not going to get rid of this one for a while so just this will be perfectly fine in it but a lot of people online are saying that you can run conventional 5w30 and it's not really going to burn anything we'll see trusty measuring cup at about 12 ounces let it settle check the level go from there all right right about halfway up the notches on the dipstick it's good enough for me now we're going to get into the carb I think we've got an, a sticking linkage. Is there a gasket? Set that there. We're going to clean this thing out. This didn't want to move hardly at all. Grab the float. Float pin. Perfect. So 
let's stick it back on the mower, see if it works. Just stuck the PCB line back on. Everything else is good. And open up the fuel valve. That thing's really sticky. I might uh, change that out at some point. Yeah, this thing's moving nice and freely now. Might have to adjust this some, depending on where our RPM's at. actually not too bad this thing runs really damn good because the wheels are a little bit worn and then this I need to somehow mess with this a little bit because it's not locking in place and it's probably why there's a bunch of crap there so I might have to mess with that a little bit just to see if we can get it to stay there. But out here, there's really no point in using a bag because you'd fill up the bag in maybe three or four passes, like even right here. Um, <clears throat> and this really isn't grass. This is just seasonal weeds. It only appears when the ground gets watered. Other than that, it dies out during the early summer, late spring and uh, lays dormant in the ground until it starts raining again. If it rained here all the time, this would be a regular thing to mow, but, you know, that's why I say it's only seasonal. We only get it kind of towards the end of, end of fall, early winter, and then it starts disappearing around late spring. So, in fact, this is probably going to be the last mow of the year uh, here tomorrow when I use the John Deere. And one other thing I wanted to note with this, 
uh, going over there with those rocks. Uh, the John Deere usually kicks up a ton of rocks when I try and mow that stuff because, you know, you got weeds and whatnot growing out of the gravel. The John Deere just picks all those rocks up, so I can't really mow that all that close to the ground. But this one, for the most part, isn't really much of an issue. So the next video on this is going to be a different video. Um, it's going to be on just me sharpening the blades up. I don't think I've done a video specifically about the twin blade system that these Hondas use. Uh, there's really nothing to it though. I think I've messed with a couple of them before, but they're not that bad to sharpen. Some people might find it a little daunting if they've never really looked at it before, but hopefully that'll show some of you guys uh, how to mess with them if you ever get one in. But I'm really happy with this little lawnmower. It kind of sucks because I like this one. I like that one. My snapper commercial that I just took in on trade. And then I've also got a lawn boy over here with a Kohler on it that's in really good condition. Waiting on parts for it, waiting on a new blade because I wasn't given one. And then I've got my trusty self-propelled Easy Walk Craftsman, which uh, is the same machine that's in my current uh, YouTube profile pic. So it kind of sucks because I like all of these and I really only need one. So I'm gonna have to keep one of them and get rid of the others just because it's money that's just sitting around basically. And I don't really like having three or four lawnmowers in one spot in the shop taking up a bunch of space, but one lawnmower is more than fine. 